If you guys have seen the teaser for my newest series on the channel, then you'll know that I have created a custom rule set for a tabletop RPG based on the world of MiHoYo's Genshin Impact. As exciting as the actual adventure is going to be, there also seems to be a bit of interest in the rule set itself. So let's take a peek behind the curtain and take a closer look at the custom rule set and how it came to be. Being a tabletop RPG, it should be no surprise that I was heavily inspired by both Dungeons & Dragons and Pathfinder. I have been playing both of these games since high school, so I've got quite a bit of experience with them. As much as I love these rule sets, I've never been fully invested in them. I always felt like the rules didn't quite service the core gameplay as well as they could've. Now I suppose I shouldn't just make a claim like that without explaining myself, huh? Let me briefly explain my own philosophy behind tabletop RPGs in general. Tabletops are an interesting media slash gaming experience because there are so many different variables to consider. From a mechanical standpoint, you have the duality between storytelling and gameplay. From a meta standpoint, you have the asymmetrical gameplay of a dungeon master and the players. When it comes to tabletops, I believe that it should be primarily a storytelling experience. The rules should be used as a tool to service this goal. The rules should both impose limits and inspire players into creating a story that's engaging and worth telling. A basic example of what I mean is this. How many times have you guys seen a parody of D&D on TV and the DM goes something like, Mwahaha, puny players, behold my greatest challenge, an ancient dragon. How do you respond? And the clever player will say, Your dragon is no match for Mildred's preparedness. She pulls out her plus one sword of dragon slaying and easily defeats your dragon. See, if a tabletop game has just the storytelling elements and no rules, then there's nothing stopping the players from literally making up whatever they want from moment to moment. That doesn't make for a good story. It doesn't even make it exciting. It just brings people out of the experience and is ultimately unsatisfying. A good story needs to have stakes. Rules should keep players and DMs both in line. That being said, rules shouldn't be too invasive. This would do the same thing as having no rules at all being too stifling and taking players out of the experience. If you have to stop every few seconds to calculate the velocity at which your character's sword is swinging to determine if you need to use a d4 or a d6 die, then your rules are probably too invasive. Of course, this matter is subjective and highly dependent on the players in your game. After all, some people are willing to put up with heavier rules compared to others. When I came up with the rules for my Genshin RPG, I tried to balance things so that the rules serve as guidelines first and foremost. An example is the rules for designing a character's elemental skill. One of the things I felt was stifling about D&D's rules is the spellcasting system. Don't get me wrong, there are tons of spells, more than I could ever use on various characters, yet it still wasn't personal. I couldn't completely customize every single spell that my character knew and made them feel like they were my own character, my own spells that I knew. What I really wanted to accomplish with my own character creation system is to allow players to fully create the exact skill set and spells of their characters. No two characters should be the exact same, even if they serve a similar role in the party. The rules of creating an elemental skill are less rules and more guidelines that urge a player into creating the skill that they want to make. The rules give the players the vocabulary needed to express their character, if you will. This is how I use rules to support the storytelling aspect of the game. D&D and Pathfinder aren't the only games that I've taken inspiration from. Obviously, there's Genshin Impact itself. Being an open-world action RPG with a strong focus on story, there's already a lot about the game that can be easily translated into a tabletop setting. Everything from the lore and setting of Tevat makes coming up with the story beats a singe. The various playable characters in the game gave me great inspiration for elemental skills to use as examples. These templates helped me to shape the guidelines that I use for character skill creation. When it comes to combat in Genshin, there's one element that is unique. Well, seven elements to be precise. 
The elemental reaction system in Genshin is perhaps the most core aspect to the combat in the game. The ways in which the seven elements interact with one another allows for more things to happen during battle other than your character's own skills. This leads to some party setups designed around triggering these reactions and basically nothing else. I wanted to translate this into the tabletop RPG, since I feel like the dynamic between party members needing to work together in order to trigger these reactions would encourage team building and create tense moments. It can also encourage players to discuss their characters and stories before the game even begins, so that they can discuss which elements they want their party to be composed of. This helps to encourage diversity. As a counterbalance to the reaction system, there's also the elemental resonance mechanic that encourages players to have the same elements in the party. This is also present in Genshin Impact. All I had to do was change up how these resonances work just a tad to fit the media of a tabletop RPG. It's important to note that some changes did have to be made while adapting these mechanics because, again, Genshin Impact is an action RPG, while this tabletop game is a turn-based tactical RPG. Just like how some things need to be changed when adapting a book into a film, so too did some of these reactions and resonances need to be changed to fit a tactical game better. But there is more to a tabletop game than just combat. The key to telling an engaging story, in my opinion, is to put your characters in a variety of situations. When solving a plot, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Instead of brute forcing a fight against a group of hilly churls, the party should be able to sneak around them. When handling a situation in a city, Combat may not be an option either, you can't just slaughter the local town's mayor without severe repercussions, so there should be a system in place to allow players to perform a form of social combat. Basically, I wanted to create rule systems for various types of encounters, but also allow them to be freeform enough so that each encounter type can weave into the other seamlessly. What I mean by this is, say the party begins an encounter as a raid on a Fatui base. They start by infiltrating the base by sneaking around. Things go well at first, but eventually someone from the party is discovered. They start to fight back, creating a distraction to prevent the other party members from being uncovered. Thus the DM needs to be able to manage both stealth and combat gameplay at the same time. I couldn't really figure out how to talk about these last two points, so here they are. One thing that annoys me about the way some people play tabletops is they treat the party as the good guys, and the DM is this nasty force that's trying to defeat the players. This is not how I play tabletops. Again, I believe they're about telling a story first and foremost, thus the DM should not be the enemy of the party. In fact, they should be actively working with the players to collectively tell a story. And another related point is that the narrator should keep in mind that they're not technically responsible for the story. The DM should provide plot for the players to act on. Therefore, it's instead the player's jobs to control the story. The last thing I want to talk about are die rolls. Unlike in D&D, which uses a d20 system, the Genshin RPG utilizes d6s for everything. Instead of increasing the die size whenever bigger damage is called for, players will actually just roll more dice. For one thing, I think it's fun to roll a ton of dice, even if we're technically playing on a digital simulator. And for another thing, rolling a bunch of dice helps to keep the rolled numbers more consistent and helps to weed out bad rolls. There's not a worse feeling than to have some epic plan for your character, only for it to be foiled by a really bad roll. The opposite is true as well. I've seen some GMs obey the results of bad dice too much, like a player trying to pet a dog while rolling a crit and then determining that the character used too much strength and crushed the poor animal. Like, seriously? Again, the point of the die rolls is to create tension. Whenever a player tries to do something that could result in failure, then dice should be rolled. No more and no less. But what exactly is a failure? I don't take a failed roll to necessarily lead to a bad outcome, just a different one. It basically means the player just wasn't able to accomplish exactly what they set out to do. So say a character is trying to balance across a rope bridge in the Guyun Stone Forest. They roll an acrobatics check to make their way across. The player only rolls three successes, but the narrator had stated that they needed four to get across unscathed. Since the player only failed slightly, the narrator decides that they don't fall from the bridge, certainly to their doom, but maybe they do stumble a bit and they lose a pack from their person. Maybe this pack held their supply of Mora. 
Now the player is presented with a new dilemma based on that die roll. Do they go and try and salvage their lost money, or do they continue to go on with their safety intact? This video is already getting pretty long, so I think I'm going to cut it here. But I will make another video shortly that will go over the game's rules in more depth, rather than just the philosophy behind the design process. So stay tuned for that. I have linked the rule set in the description below, so please be sure to look it over and give me feedback. Thanks for watching though, and have a blessed day.